Good morning, welcome to Daily Chapel, this Ash Wednesday service. Thank you, Andrea, uh, as always, for sharing your gifts with us. Um, just a brief announcement. CWC was able to get the Comfort Dogs and they will be in Christensen today from 12 to 1.30 and possibly tomorrow. And then uh, Claudia and Kaylee's candlelight vigil is tomorrow at six in the quad. And Claudia Murray's visitation is Friday, um, March the 4th, three to seven at Mount Olivet Lutheran Church at 50th and Knox. Visitation Saturday, 12.30 to 2 p.m. for the 2 p.m. funeral service at Mount Olivet uh, Lutheran Church. And there's a private interment. And we will um, have this information the rest of the week um, to share in the bulletin announcements. So let us now center in the presence and in the name of the creator, the Christ and the comforter. Amen. Our prayer of today. Let us pray. Good and gracious God. Out of your love and mercy, you breathed into dust the breath of life creating us to serve you in our neighbors, call forth our prayers and acts of kindness and strengthen us to face our mortality with confidence in the mercy of your son, Jesus Christ, our savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever, amen.
A reading from Psalm 51 assigned for this Ash Wednesday, and I read just excerpts. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love, according to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Walk me, wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and sustain in me a willing spirit. O Lord, open my lips and my mouth shall declare your praise, for you have no delight in sacrifice. If I were to give a burnt offering, you would not be pleased. The sacrifice acceptable to God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O God, you will not despise. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable unto you, O God, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. It was shortly after lunch when our plane landed in Ho Chi Minh City, what we once knew as Saigon, Vietnam. It was a clear and not too terribly warm day. And as our plane taxied to the terminal, we had our first glimpse of the ashes. Along the runway were rusted gunnery positions and burned out hangars, remnants of a time we might wish to forget. The ashes of nationalistic pride and war and violence and suffering. As we pushed our way out of the airport and climbed into vans to begin our trip into the city, the teeming masses of people crowding the sidewalks and streets were a blur of activity, but there was another glimpse of ashes. The soot and dust hung in the air. Those who cared and knew better wore masks. Others were oblivious to the palpable signs of human progress and of their own disease. Fossil fuel spewed into the air, obscured our views. The ashes of greed and progress and pollution and sickness. That evening, as we walked from dinner near our hotel, we had our first encounters with the poor who looked to us for handouts, crisp dollar bills with a ticket for some nearly a month's wage but their pleas did not hide their circumstances, open fires on the city sidewalks, preparing the little food they could gather, the smells and sights of making do, getting by, surviving if they could, the ashes of poverty and injustice and hunger. The next morning, we were up very early on our way out of the city by 3 a.m. and the fires blazed on street corners and alongside the road as we drove south toward the Mekong River open fires to battle the darkness, to offer security, to mark a place, a country awake while we dozed in our comfortable vans, a country fighting to keep the light shining, to hold off the darkness, the ashes of the night and the frightening and the unexpected. And six hours later, as we pulled into the hidden driveway and parked near the public entrance to the orphanage, we were face to face with the children who had been left behind children of all ages whose parents were too poor or too sick or too tired to care for them properly. This was our destination. And after a few minutes of governmental formalities, five screaming children appeared from behind a closed door. The ashes of love that did not survive the realities of life, the ashes of our souls. And then we saw his face the face we had seen before only in a few sketchy photographs. And he screamed for all of his life as he clung to his new mother's neck. We cried and laughed and kissed him and comforted him and told him how much we loved him. And a few days later, when he awoke in our bed back in the city and laughed at my funny face and let me hold him tight, I knew that the ashes would never overcome the love we know in the embrace of a child. The ashes are the inevitable and messy stuff of our lives. They are always there. They're smells and stains and reminders of darkness and sin, but they will never win as long as we believe that our God loves us and sends us children to share our lives. And then we were home and some of the wonder of those days in Vietnam had faded. But once in a while, even then, I was in the basement room where we stored several souvenirs from our visit to Vietnam and the smell of the ashes from the baskets and nets still brought me up short, got under my skin, 
reminded me of who I am, who I truly am. And then I would walk into Thomas's room to find him playing and smiling. Hi, Dad, he said. And I know the love that God intends for God's people. God had a son whose life, death, resurrection, and ascension from the ashes promises us that we shall never be separated from the love of God. A son whose name and sacrifice we recall today as we are marked with the cross of ashes, the ashes of our own mortality. From dust you have come and to dust you shall return, marked so that we might celebrate the wondrous joy of God's deep and abiding love, God's Easter love. This is my parable of ashes for this Ash Wednesday, a personal story that reminds me of the ashes that mark our existence on this earth, our ashes of pride and war, of greed and progress, of poverty and injustice, of the darkness and unexpected, of the loves that did not survive, made especially poignant this week as we mourn the loves we lost in Kaylee and Claudia. This is who we are, whether we live in Vietnam or Minneapolis, but who we are has been transformed by the love of God, the love we know in our communities of faith, in our bonds of love, in the embrace of our children, the love we know in the cross of our savior who creates in us a clean heart, a new and right spirit. Thanks be to the God who loves us so much that he sent his only son to save us from our ashes. Amen. I ask us to stand for the invitation to Lent. Friends in Christ today with the whole church, we enter the time of remembering Jesus' Passover from death to life, and our life in Christ is renewed. We begin this holy season by acknowledging our need for repentance and for God's mercy. We are created to experience joy and communion with God, to love one another and to live in harmony with creation. But our sinful rebellion separates us from God, our neighbors and creation, so that we do not enjoy the life our creator intended. As disciples of Jesus, we are called to a discipline that contends against evil and resists whatever leads us away from love of God and neighbor. I invite you, therefore, to discipline of Lent, self-examination and repentance, prayer and fasting, sacrificial giving and works of love, strengthened by the gifts of word and sacrament. Let us continue our journey through these 40 days to the great three days of Jesus' death and resurrection. confession of our sins, most holy and merciful God, we and before the whole company of heaven that we have sinned um, our own most grievous fault in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not forgiven others as we have been forgiven. Have mercy on us, O oh God. We have shut our ears to your call to serve as Christ served us. We have not been true to the mind of Christ. We have grieved your Holy Spirit. Have mercy on us. Our past unfaithfulness, the pride, envy, hypocrisy, the apathy that have infected our lives, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O oh God. Our self-indulgent appetites and ways and our exploitation of other people, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O oh God. Our negligence in prayer and worship and our failure to share the faith that is in us, we confess to you. Have mercy on us. 
our neglect of human need and suffering and our indifference to injustice and cruelty, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O oh God. Our false judgments, our uncharitable thoughts towards our neighbors and our prejudice and contempt towards those who differ from us, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O oh God. Our waste and pollution of your creation and our lack of concern for those who come after us, we confess to you and mercy on us. Restore to us, O oh God, and let your anger depart from us. Hear us, O oh God, for your mercy is great. Almighty God, you have created us out of the dust of the earth. May these ashes be a sign of our mortality and penitence, reminding us that only by the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ are we given eternal life through the same Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. At this time, those who desire the imposition of ashes may come forward to come forward. The ministers mark the forehead of each person with a cross of ashes saying, remember, you are dust and to dust you shall return. Tori will be off to the west wall um, if you uh, opt out and she'll give you a Q-tip and she'll speak the words. Come. I want Jesus to walk with me. I want Jesus to walk with me. All along my hindrance. Jesus to walk with me through my trials, Lord, walk with me through my trials, Lord, walk with me. Please stand. Accomplish in us, O oh God, the work of your salvation. By the cross and passion of your son, our savior. Almighty God, have mercy on us. 
Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Renew us for service and prayer. Strengthen us in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Now receive this blessing. Mother in God, Father and Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. As those loved and forgiven and promised new life, go forth into Lent with courage, hope, and peace. And remember to love and serve your neighbor.